Hey Tanner, this is Keaton Everett from ABC going over your pitching video from the spring break camp. We'll uh, go over and, and talk about mechanics and, and you know look at what you're doing and, and talk about what we can do different, what we're doing right, and uh, just get ourselves on a, on a path to keeping ourselves healthy, creating more power, more velocity. And um, so we'll start first with, with how, we're, how we're starting. You know, everything starts over that rubber. You know, if we're not starting right, it's going to be hard to finish right, all right? So first off, right off the bat, good thing that, that I like to see when we're doing the wind-up is a lot of times we'll see kids taking big steps, you know, back, big steps to the left. But, the, but what, what you'll see happen is, is your head will start shifting all over the place. You know, there's just a lot of movement. So the more we can limit that movement, the better off we're going to be. And, and you do a good job at, 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 you know, limiting your movement, staying over your back leg, staying over that rubber, all right? So the biggest thing that, and, and also right off the bat, get off the rubber, too, all right? You know, you're apt to slip. You, you know, it's it's not you know it's not good to, th to throw out the plastic. We want to be out in front of in front of the rubber on the dirt. You know, if we could, we'd want to throw pitch from up here. You know, we want to try to throw as close as we can to the hitters. So get up and keep that foot in the dirt. Get it off that rubber first off. All right. Um, and also, you're breaking your hands really early and really high. All right. You can see your arm path drops down here. All right. So what we want to do is keep those hands alright once those hands start coming over the head which you know it's fine to go over your head but make sure you keep your hands in, in your glove and together until it gets down to your waist down to your belly button below your chest line somewhere um, you know about right when whenever your leg gets gets up to its highest point so your so your legs at the highest point here so those hands need to be down here with the ball still in it and then you break as that leg starts traveling down. All right, so we want that leg to get up, and then we want those hands to break as that leg's coming down. So you're just breaking early, um, and all that does, that just causes inconsistencies with with, um, with release point, arm path, and where you break. We want to be able to break our hands at the same time, same point, same everything. <clears throat> so just get, those, get that glove in hand down around your waist as that leg's getting up, and then once that leg starts going forward, then you're breaking your hands, all right? So you're just breaking your hands early. Okay, one good thing you do is that you do start your hips forward before your leg goes forward. So we want to see, you know, these hips going forward before, <coughs> excuse me, this, this knee and foot start swinging out. So that's good. All right, you're driving with your hips, and that's good to see. All right, now you do, looks like you pop open a little bit early. If you were to draw a, a, a line from your ball your foot on that back side, um, you kind of want to land somewhere within that line. So it looks like you're just popping open a little bit earlier. Um, and one of the, the reasons that that is, is is watch what our glove's doing. All right. You watch and you see how your palm is, is pronated out to the first baseman side. And you can see it curl back, curl away, and almost completely leave the picture right here. All right, you can't even, you know, it looks like you don't have an arm right here. Um, so that causes, because that, that shoulder's early, that's going to cause these hips to pop open early. All right, so you're just losing power, you're losing velocity potential um, as that arm curls around. So what we want to see is, you know, you almost feel like your elbow's doing the work. You know, we don't want to be pronating or supinating our, our wrist, meaning, um, you know, moving that thumb out or in, we want to keep that wrist neutral. All right, we don't want to spin it one way or the other. Um, you just want to feel like that that elbow's lifting up. All right, we we would we would keep the glove, you know, facing this way. All right, and then we and then it's more of a once that glove gets out over that front foot, you know, we want to lock it in place out here, and then so it's right here, and then we're going to want to rotate the elbow down while keeping the glove about the same height. All right, so I guess it would be a little bit lower. But in this picture, ideally we'd want to see glove here and elbow angle a little bit like this. So it's more of a rotation of the elbow down and not swinging that glove out towards that first base side. All right, that'll keep your hips closed longer. That'll generate more torque in your hips, 
or torque in your upper body and get you in a, in a little bit better position to throw. Now you do have pretty good torque which is that hip shoulder separation. You know, we want to see that hip go forward before that arm gets all the way through. So you're generating some good torque. So now it's just a matter of incorporating a little more um, power in it by keeping your hips closed a little bit longer. So that, that's pretty good though. Um, so it's just, just that big side as you got that front side leak. All right, so that glove just curls out, curls around, and you're just losing so much by popping that shoulder open. All right, and that also exposes his back shoulder a little bit to some more stresses. Um, and so, you know, we always want to be able to release in the most healthiest position. Now, your arm path looks good. You know, there's not a whole lot of red flags showing up. Um, you know, this is a good angle to be at. It might be, uh, no, nope, that's, that's fine. You know, a lot of times you'll see hyper adduction where it gets below, and then sometimes it'll be a little bit too low. You know, you're a little bit low, but, but you're still fine. Um, so, th so th that's, that's good. So now it's just a matter of just incorporating more lower body, letting yourself get out over that front foot more. Um, and the more you can get out, you know, take off, step off about, you know, five or six feet lengths, and that's where you should be landing, all right? So, you know, you should be landing a little bit farther out. And what that'll do, as you can watch, as you come through release, you can see this leg start to straight. You're almost completely straight at release. All right, we want to see at release, we want to see more angle in your leg, and then after you release, then that leg comes straight as you follow through. All right, so just get out a little bit farther and just stay in your legs a little bit more. You're finishing good, you got a good finish, all right, but we just, we can get out farther down that mound using more of those legs, all right, so other than that, I mean, it's fundamentally all pretty good, good torque, you know, good balance. It's just a matter of, of um, you know, using more legs, getting a little more consistent over the rubber with where our hands are breaking um, and just how we're starting, um, and then just keeping that, that left shoulder closed, letting that glove get out and rotating down with, with that front elbow instead of pulling it out. Um, and you'll get out farther out front, you'll get farther down the mound, You'll generate more torque, you'll create more velocities, more arm speed, which is all good stuff for pitching. All right, so anyways, good luck this season. Hope you have a uh, successful time. Uh, thanks for making it out to our camp. Hopefully you, you learned a lot and had a good time, and we look forward to seeing you again with ABC.